Hello everyone, it's Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo with another My Two Cents video for Star Citizen. In today's video, we'll be talking about paints, the GT12 rover, and another box run for delivering boxes to the rooftops in New Babbage where you could make over 70k per run. So Star Citizen finally has the new paint mechanic inside of the game. Now I don't want to go too deeply into this because it is very much just right there on the surface, get the pun. But there are some things about it I want you to think of while you're looking at these and either jumping for joy and grabbing one or complaining about the pricing. We're still in the development stage of the game so pricing still isn't set according to what it will be once the game goes live. Now, if we start buying a whole bunch of these things at three, five, seven, nine, eleven, twenty dollars, I'm sure the prices are going to stay the same, and you're going to just jump all over me because I would deserve that. And I am a little bit annoyed with the pricing, but I am a little bit happy with the actual paint schemes. They are. There are some that are just amazing, one of them being the Valkyrie, another one being the Connie, and I have one that's on my arrow that just looks amazing. Yes, I complain, and I still bought it. But I am the queen of the enablers, and I do run a channel called Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I just want everybody to calm down and just wait, and let's see what these cost in the game. Hopefully like the rovers that we're going to talk about in just a moment here, they are more expensive to buy in dollars and cents than they are going to be in the game. Rovers cost much more in real life money than they do in the game, which is why most people, when you talk to them, say don't buy a rover unless you're going to use it as an LTI token. And we'll get into that in just one moment. So what do I think of the paint schemes? I like them. I like their idea. I just don't like the pricing. And I'm going to hold my breath. I'm not going to hold my breath. I'm going to have a wait and see attitude to see what they wind up costing in the game. Having just complained about the cost of rovers and paint schemes in our first topic, I do want to come out right, right away and say I did buy these rovers. I bought these rovers because I've been playing the game and enjoying it again, and I haven't played for a long time, and I am one of those people that is not an original backer, but I would say a Wave 2 backer, 2013, and I do want to support the game. But I am going to stick to my guns and say this. Buy rovers in-game because they're cheap, and they're much more expensive in real dollars than they are in in-game UEC. So let me just stop right there. I'm not going to go any further with the buy or don't buy. What I'm going to talk about is, a, I'm going to talk about what these rovers are for in my eyes. But I have to bring you into the world of, I have to bring you into the world of Star Citizen being live. It's hard to imagine. I don't even know if I'm going to be alive then, but I, I, I want you to think of it this way. Your org has set up bases around major, major mining resources, maybe on Daymar, maybe on a moon that's sitting in the Goss system, or maybe on a moon that's sitting in the Pyro system, wherever it might be. You have multiple bases all over the place that are mining all different resources. And you have one main base where everything comes into it. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the, the rover on the left right now, which is the luxury one. This is the one I like the most because it has two SCU of cargo space. And I believe that's going to be incredibly useful. This rover is going to be incredibly useful, along with the Urso, of getting supplies from one of those bases to the other. Because bases are going to need supplies. And if you're going to have one main base where all your cargo comes into, this is going to be a good reason for that. The other two rovers, I honestly don't know what the effectiveness of that armored 
I, I want to call it an armored car, but it's not even that. It, it's some kind of battlefield uh, aerial denial. I don't know. I, I know it has all missiles, but it, it's like, why does that not have the EMP, but the racer does? It just makes no sense to me at all. But I did want the racer, and I wanted the luxury one, a second luxury one, so I got the package, and I'll probably upgrade it to something else and just buy these in-game later on. But I, I really do feel that your best option here is the luxury rover, the white one, and if you are somebody that's going to take play, you know, take part in the Daymar Rally, um, that racer is gorgeous. Not as fast as some of the other rovers and bikes in the game, but that EMP is going to make it interesting unless they move it to where it needs to be, which is in the armored car. Calling an armored car, that's my take on it. Before I go on, I want to say thank you to everyone that commented on my 92k bot run video. And I know that some of you are having issues, and it might be my explanation of it. It might be you not knowing where to look. So whenever you get into the Hurston system, you could be anywhere in the Hurston system, but you have to be in the Hurston system. Not at HUR, L1, L2, whatever, but in the planetary system. You open up your Moby Glass, you go over to your missions, and then you need to look at the top and click on the personal tab and make sure deliveries is selected. And you will see those Hurston box missions. You do the same thing when you get to R Corp. You have to be in the system and you'll get those two that will go either from both from Lyria or one from Lyria and one from Walla. And that's how you get those six missions. If you're not getting them that way, post below because I'd love to start seeing how many people just aren't able to get them. But mind you, if you've done the missions once while you're logged in, you won't see them again because these six missions are supposed to unlock your ability to actually purchase drug at those locations. All right? kind of tough. When there's a coordinate system, I'm hoping that they'll let you put beacons in each one of the different places, so then you'll be able to quick fly to them. Some people have said, I don't understand, how do I get to them? Do I really have to fly the 600 kilometers to get there? Deployed. Yes, you do. And that's why today's video is focused on something that's a lot easier. Doesn't net as much money in one run, but it can. And I want to introduce you that to that today. I'm sorry for jumping over my words today, folks. All right, so the first part of this box run is go to Crusader. That's going to be the first part. So you go to Crusader, you get into the system, and you open your Moby Glass and go to missions. For this one, do not go to personal. They will be right there under general and delivery. The types of missions that you're looking for are all going to say deliver to a landing pad locker. Once you see that, you can start picking and choosing the pickup missions, the, you know, the pickup point that you want. Because they will spawn on Yella, on Damar, on Selen, and on Port Alarsar. And I'm going to say this, don't just go in and try to grab all of them at once. I would say grab two or three, wait a few minutes, grab two or three more again that are at the same moon or the same two moons. That way you don't have to run all over the place. I now do these missions and grab a whole bunch of them all at once from Selen. I could get them from Terra Mills, Gallant Farms, and Tram and Meyer. Okay, so I get them from those three locations. It could take me 15 or 20 minutes to get eight of them, but that 15 or 20 minutes, it would have been spent flying over to Orison. And then I'd spend another 10 minutes flying over to the orphanage. And then I'd spend another eight to 10 minutes in, um, I'm trying to think, in, because you have to make two jump, right? You have to jump from wherever you are to Hurston, then you got to jump from Hurston over to Lyria, which is over in the R-Corp system, to Walla, and then over to the Crusader system. So there's a lot of jumping in the 
92K box mission. In this mission, there's just gonna be one jump. After you collect as much as you can and you've gone to all the different moons that you want to go to, I still say try to keep it to one, then all you're gonna do is go to New Babbage and then just go bopping all across the different rooftop that are there. Before you start saying, yeah, but you can do bounty hunting missions, yeah, but you could do claim jumping missions, yes, you can. That's the glory of this game. It's the beauty of the, the mechanics that they have here. There's so much to do. Yeah, let's not talk about what you just saw. That's going to be something that I'm going to talk about in just about three, maybe five seconds after I'm done with this rant. You can do anything that you want in the game to make money. Don't listen to anything that anyone tells you, including me, unless you really want to do it. And don't make fun of me for clicking on the wrong button right over there. I'll fix it in just a second. So what, what I'm going to tell you is there's so much to do in Star Citizen. I would say for the first couple of days, couple of weeks that you're in, just take a little bit of everything. When you've gotten around the game and you've actually settled down into what you want to do, then start working on the profession that you want to. And we're going to get into all of those. We're talking about how to start off right now and get that second ship. But after you get that second ship, however you play the game, however you play the game is the right way to play the game. And nobody could tell you anything different. All right. So this is left in here because I want you to understand a mistake that I've been making in this delivery mission ever since I was doing it until early this morning. It is imperative that you land in the center of each one of these landing pads because sometimes the physics of where you're landing on those roofs, because everything is just hollow in this game anyway, the physics of where you're landing, sometimes your ship doesn't sit right. That's A. B, the winds in New Babbage are tremendously strong, blowing at over 100 kilometers an hour, and they will blow your ship around. That's B. And C is, if you have your engines turned on, they will blow you off the rooftop, which means if you're inside and leave your engines running, you could come outside to find your ship floating above one of those landing pads with no way to get back in. And that has happened to me. So with that, take these two pieces of advice for every box mission you do. Every time you land, no matter where it is, turn off your engines. Just tap I, your engines will go off. Two, after you leave your ship, close whatever door you went out of. That way nobody can go into your ship and steal it. So those two things will help you out in a lot of different ways. But this box run, I ran eight or nine, I believe it was, boxes. It took me 20 minutes to pick up the boxes, about eight minutes to go from A to B, and 11 more minutes to close out all of my takeoffs and landings on all the roof rooftops that there were. I was lucky though. There were at least four of these boxes that were within 4,000 meters of each other. And that really made things go a lot faster. I am so lucky that I've only had to deal with a couple of those floating ship bug. But when you get to New Babbage and you're on a rooftop and you've delivered your first box and there's still another eight inside of your ship, it gets a little bit crazy. And I wish I had the footage right now but it leads you to do things like kill yourself, <laughs> go back to wherever you started, grab another ship, and bring it right up to the ship that's hovering and kind of jump into it, and then you could go on with your day. I had one rescue work, and I had another one that, when I finally got into the ship, it 30 k would with uh, 11 boxes in it. So yes, there's still some issues with the game. So I'm gonna say my third recommendation is do not put more than eight boxes into your ships at this point. Because of the 30Ks and the client crashes and the inability after a client crash to get back into your session, 
don't waste all that time. Eight boxes, you could usually pick them up on two moons in about nine to 11 minutes. And that that's it. That, that would be a great run. You have an average of $7,000 a box because some are six and some are eight. So that's gonna be well over 50K. And I think that works. I think that worked because you could do two of these runs in the time it takes you to do the 92k box run. Maybe a little bit more, but I think these are more fun because there's less there's there's less flying around towards one place in atmosphere on Earth. That's all I got for you today, people. I hope you like what I brought to you. I am very happy with the gameplay. I'm very unhappy with the server stability. My next video will talk all about Invictus and talk about why instead of buying the Titan in-game, I actually bought it on RSA's website. But I, I am shaking my head as I'm saying that. But there's a reason for it and I'll make that known in the next video. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button below. If you are one of my subscribers, please just look down and make sure that you have that notification icon selected so you get notified of all my future videos. And a big thanks to my patrons. I have a quarter of my wall noise protected, noise canceled, whatever you want to call it. I only have another three fourths to go, which is going to take me a couple of months to buy the tiles to put them up there. I'm not using cheap ones. I don't like the styrofoam little pieces I'm using something that's a little bit different and hopefully when I'm done I'll take a picture and show you all because if it wasn't for you I would never have that done if you do want to help support the channel you can go to patreon p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash batgirl as little as one dollar a month you could help out the channel a lot improve my audio and actually start to play with me and uh, hopefully in the very near future with some kind of deity's help, hopefully God, but you never know. I, I get the uh, ability to start doing interviews with people again. It's possible, I just don't know how probable. And with that said, folks, you all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.